Hey guys, Elizabeth here from Plant Based Bride, and I'm back for another episode of Last Week in Vegan. The first story of the day is a really sad one, and it is that poachers broke into a French zoo so that they could kill a white rhino to take its horn. These poachers broke into the zoo and killed the four-year-old rhino, Vince, by shooting him three times in the head. They then sawed off his horn and escaped the zoo. Luckily, the other two rhinos that live with Vince are safe and escaped this massacre. Now, I know that you all know my views on zoos. If you don't, I will leave a link in the description box for you to read up. But despite my disagreement with zoos and with the idea of animal captivity as conservation, I do find this horrifying because zoos, while problematic, are meant to be a safe place for those animals. Animals are meant to be protected when they're in a zoo. That is the whole idea, at least according to people who promote and support zoos, that these zoos are there to protect the animals. And if poachers can so easily break in and kill one of these animals, what purpose does the zoo really serve? Because it seems to me the fact that Vince was held captive in a cage made it much easier for him to be caught, slaughtered, and dismembered. This was still possible despite the fact that five zookeepers live on the property full time and there are surveillance cameras. While white rhinos are luckily not endangered, this is still a huge loss. What are your thoughts on zoos and on poaching? Let me know in the comments below. The next story of the day is that Guatemala has passed groundbreaking anti-cruelty laws. This new set of laws, which was passed by the Guatemalan Congress, puts forward protections for animals in all sorts of different situations, whether they be in circuses, zoos, labs, homes, or the wild. The set of laws was drafted and submitted by the Humane Society International, who has been finding great success working with various governments around the world to pass anti-animal cruelty laws. The Humane Society International's global field manager, Cynthia Dent, said, The laws crack down on perpetrators of animal cruelty by establishing fines and setting up the government to deal with cruelty cases. Some of the things that are now banned in Guatemala thanks to these laws are animal testing for cosmetics and dog fighting. They also promote spaying and neutering of companion animals to help reduce the problem of stray dogs in Guatemala. This is such a wonderful step forward for Guatemala and for the world at large, and hopefully more and more countries will continue to move in the right direction and protect the animals that live within their borders. In the next story of the day, two of my very separate worlds are colliding. That's veganism and musical theater in Canada. Who would have thought? This story focuses on PEI, or Prince Edward Island, the smallest province in Canada, but the one with probably, arguably, the biggest heart. In PEI, the sale of vegan cheese is going through the roof. Julaine Molnar has started a new company, Fresh Start Fomage, and is creating artisanal vegan cheeses on the island. She creates alternatives to cheddar, gouda, feta, all using nuts and other plant-based foods. And now for the fun intersecting part of this story. If her name sounds familiar, it's because she's been performing in the Anne of Green Gables musical on the island for about the past two decades. She's also performed at the Shaw Festival and other festivals across Canada. As a vegan or vegetarian for most of her life, when she moved back to PEI, she found that the options for vegan cheeses weren't as plentiful as she would have liked, so she started her own business. On her very first day of business, all 32 varieties of fromage sold out in less than an hour and a half. I love this story and I love that someone that's part of the theatre community in Canada is making such a huge difference in one of my favourite places in all of Canada, Prince Edward Island. The next story of the day is that Portuguese schools must now offer a vegan option in the cafeteria. A new law has mandated that any school, hospital, prison, or university must have at least one vegan option on the menu. The bill was passed into law on March 3rd, 2017, and has been something that's been a work in progress for the past two years, started by Portugal's Vegetarian Association. Their petition stated, the adoption of a vegetarian diet reflects the freedom of choice of each individual, as it is openly declared and defended in the Portuguese constitution in accordance with democratic principles. After gaining more than 15,000 signatures, the petition was approved by various political parties who cited the freedom of choice in food as the motivation behind enacting the bill. Any public cantinas in Portugal have six months to implement the mandate. 
this is amazing news as I know so many people who are interested in moving towards a plant-based diet who feel restricted by lack of access. And the idea that all public cafeterias in the country are now going to be offering a vegan option makes choosing a vegan lifestyle so much easier for these people and I am so excited and hope that Canada follows suit. Maybe we should start a petition. The next story of the day is that a nonprofit has been handing out vegan burritos to the homeless. A Sikh couple owning a food truck and many volunteers have been distributing more than 850 vegan burritos to the homeless of LA each week. The Sikh couple Ravi and Jackie Singh have started a non-for-profit called Share a Meal. Five nights a week they hand out freshly made vegan burritos to the homeless of LA. Their non-for-profit is funded by the couple themselves as well as donors who can support a night of free meals for $500. In addition to these free meals, they also provide the homeless with blankets, socks, and toiletries. Jackie Singh said, One of the components of the Sikh community is having a community kitchen and making it available to all people. I think this is such an incredible thing and it really warms my heart to see this story. As soon as I read it, I got tears in my eyes and it kind of makes me want to drop everything and start doing this myself in Toronto. So. Thank you so much Ravi and Jackie for doing this. You are incredible humans and making such a difference in your community and all of us could learn a lot from you. The last story of the day is a little bit of a controversial one. Dr. Shivam Joshi has written a feature on Huffington Post claiming that humans did not evolve to eat meat. Now even amongst the vegan community this is a debate. Did humans evolve to eat meat but we just shouldn't eat it? Did they not evolve to eat meat and it's really not good for us? Is it healthy? Is it not? So this one's really controversial, not just in the world at large, but even just amongst the vegan community. Because no matter why you're vegan, you probably have a strong opinion about whether humans evolved to eat meat or not. And not all vegans agree. Of course, there's no denying that humans have eaten meat in the past. Our ancestors did eat meat. But did they evolve to eat meat? That's a hard question to answer. I won't get really in depth into the arguments that Dr. Joshi put forward in his article. I will leave it in the description below so that you can check it out, but I would love to know your thoughts. Do you think that humans evolved to eat meat or not? I did want to talk about one point he made though that I found very interesting. He said that humans eating meat is like dogs eating chocolate. For a very long period of their evolution they didn't have access to it and they didn't eat it. That's just arguably true. For a long part of our evolution we didn't have access to or eat meat. Now once we had access to it, we did start eating it, usually in small quantities. Kind of the same as dogs. Once they started living in homes with humans that had chocolate, they started getting their paws on small quantities of it. And in tiny quantities, you might not notice their effects. But the more chocolate a dog eats, the more toxic it becomes to their system, even becoming fatal. And he draws that parallel to humans eating meat. The more meat we eat, the more we notice the toxicity and if we eat too much of it, we'll die, whether it be of heart disease or cancer or something else. And I think that's a really interesting parallel to make. It made me think about the whole issue in a different way than I had before. So check out the article if you're interested and let me know in the comments below what you think. Did we evolve to eat meat or not? I hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode of Last Week in Vegan. As always, let me know in the comments below your thoughts on all of the stories. Let me know about stories I missed this week and I'll see you really soon in my next one. Bye guys. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Check out my last video right here and follow me on social media so we can be friends.